Hey, what is up guys and welcome back. So in today's video, we're going to be discussing a new project that I've been working on behind the scenes, which is in a breakout board flight control. And we're like, what the hell is that? Well, what I've decided to do is to break out the flight controller into super simple components to have everyone understand them. Now, this is a flight controller we're looking at. However, it's missing the gyro in the OSD. And the reason for that is because I made them into separate boards to make it much simpler for you to understand. Now, who's gonna benefit from such a thing? Now, I have all my files also available for everybody. Now, the main idea here is to help you understand how a flight controller works, how everything is connected. And also, if you're looking into developing your own flight controller with some other gyro, with some different things, you'll be able to do that after you understand the basic concept of a flight controller and I've tried to do this as simple as possible to help you understand everything and this is a brief overview of what's going to be upcoming on the channel just to test out and see how your guys react to it and if you guys are interested I will put full effort into this series and if not maybe a couple videos and then we'll just call it quits and again I do hope to continue this topic and then we jump into the ESC then we do the F7 but let's quickly understand what we have in front of us here. So here we have the flight controller breakout board. Now this is missing the gyro and the OSD. And the reason for that is because I have them separately. This is the OSD right here. And here's the gyro right here. Now, if we take a closer look at the flight controller, you see I've broken out pieces of this so you can make better understanding of it because it's very simple. What we have here is we have a five volt regulator. Usually you don't see this type of five volt regulator on uh, flight controllers. What you usually see is switching regulators, but for the sake of making this easy, I decided to go with an LDO. Plus I have a bunch of these around. So that's the reason why I did it like this. So this takes a maximum of 20 volts input and it gives five volts to the flight controller. Now, after the five volts, usually you get a 3.3 volts to power on the what? The OSD, the gyro, and the flight controller. So here's our 3.3 volt LDO regulator. Usually you get to see these really tiny on the flight controller and even on ESCs. These are the guys that are in charge of the 3.3 volts or the power. Now, once we have that, if we take a closer look down here, we see we have the gyro pinouts. So what's really unique about this design, obviously you're not gonna be able to put this in a quadcopter, but if you, if you are a developer, you know, if you're developing something, you'll be able to bring in another gyro and just connect it right there and try to program for it. And it's just, it'll just be that simple for you to debug, make sure it's working. Then later on, we could incorporate it into a final version of a flight controller, which I already have done before, but we'll come back to that later on. So here's the gyro section. We have 3.3 volts, we have ground and the chip select, and you'll get to see the exact same pads on the gyro board. Now, if we look up here, we find the OSD section. We have VDD, which is 3.3 volts, ground, and the other wires it needs to talk to the flight controller. Very simple stuff. Here's our boot area, here's our LED area, and here's our USB area. Now the USB area is pretty interesting because on every flight controller that's an F4, you'll find two resistors really close to the USB. And if you measure those, those will be 22 ohms as far as, yeah, 22 ohms. And the reason you put these 22 ohm protocols is because it's found in the data sheet to get it to select the correct protocol or the correct USB protocol in order, in order for you to speak with the flight controller. And that's really it. And here you get to see a shot key diode usually. And what this does is because once you plug in the USB, it gives five volts and you also have a five volt regulator. So if you had the battery connected and you plugged in a USB and you didn't have this, you basically have them short each other and you can screw your USB, you can screw up a lot of things. So you put this little shot key diode right here. And what that'll do is it'll take the five volt from the USB, take the five volt from the regulator and just output it from here. It'll decide which one goes through and one goes through without them shorting each other out. And that's what that's for. And usually when you have your flight controller booting up from battery and and it's not booting up from USB is because this thing went bad. That's all that usually happens and vice versa. Usually these guys go bad. See, as you can tell, you, you'll be able to understand and debug more because all of them are basically identical. And the only difference is the type of regulators you're using, but the main concept, this is a simple form as you can get right here. Now, if we take a closer look here, we see we have a capacitor, 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 capacitor. Most of these, except one, I think, are used just to smooth out the voltage, just to keep it smooth and, and you know, remove the noise and keep it filtered, 3.3 volts, just to the flight controller. That's all that's for. And this is the minimum amount you need to get going, which is really crazy. It's, it's very minimalistic. And this thing right here is that, you know, that the gray, the gray shining thing that says eight megahertz on there. That's the, the crystal resonator right here because the flight control uses that as a reference to know its clock speed and it has a multiplier inside. I know it runs higher, but it uses that eight megahertz multiplier and that's how you get your clock speed basically. So let's go ahead and take a look at the OSD part real quick. So let's just go ahead and find that. 
And now we're looking at the OSD. Now this is everything you need in order to get an OSD working. We have our tantalum capacitors, we have some more capacitors. Now most of these capacitors are, again, just to smooth out the voltage for the OSD chip, and it takes 3.3 volts. We have 3.3 volts, ground, as you can tell, look, it's going right there. It's all going through. We have, I just put more grounds everywhere. And these are the same exact pins that we saw on the flight controller board. We have CS, S clock, data in, data out, uh, video ground, which is for the video input. This is where your camera would actually go. And this is where your VTX yellow wire would go. And here's just some grounds on the same board. So we have uh, uh, everything grounded properly. And if we move on to the gyro, it's the same exact thing with the gyro here. We have a couple capacitors just to keep it stable. And then we have our pins and you know our power input, 3.3 volts in ground. And the same pins here you'll find exactly on that flight control. So here's the gyro section, here's the OSD section. Very simple stuff. So in the upcoming series, what I aim to do is to break these down into more detail, step by step, and help you understand everything because we also do have the schematics which you'll have access to, especially if you're my Patreon, you get exclusivity, uh, you get everything first here. So for example, here's on-screen display schematic right here. And I will make more sense of this. It might look complicated, but it's actually not. It's really simple stuff, especially when you start taking things away from each other and understanding them piece by piece. Everything will start to make sense and you'll be able to look at any flight controller and know what is what which is something really great and at the same time i try to keep in mind to keep the size of the capacitors and resistors as large as i can in order to help you solder and at the same time it'll make it so much easier on me because these are development boards and and they're aimed to teach you how these things work even you know practicing your smd soldering and even designing your own flight controller or some other variant because you'll be able to do quite a lot with this so it's it's really really great and um it's going to be very interesting and i really do hope that you guys will be interested in this because I would really like to put my full energy into this and uh, this little project or series, if I should say, because the next series would probably go into the F7 because it, once we design the F7, all we need to do is just replace this part right here. Everything else will stay exactly the same. And um, it's gonna be really interesting. Just the pins are gonna be different and also show you how to understand what pin does what on each firmware, how to read that in the beta flight source code. It's very simple, just two, I think it's just two files and that's it. It'll tell you everything you need to know. Um, and it's labeled exactly. You'll see PB9, PB8, PB0, whatever. You'll see all of those and uh, you'll be able to use them as you want here. And you could even do more things. We'll, later on, we'll probably do a breakout for um, a pit mode. We can also do breakout for, uh, what is it, dual cameras. Uh, we can do a breakout for an a volt regulator. We could do so many things with this. But first of all, let's just understand the core principles or the core concept and the basics in order for you or in order for us to go to the next step here. And well, that's it, guys. I really want to see you guys' feedback on this. And again, a huge shout out to PCBWay because if it wasn't for PCBWay, I wouldn't be doing this because this allows me to constantly keep trying things screwing up and not really care and at the end of the day give you something very useful and huge shout out to them and yeah and that's it guys i'll see you guys in the next one peace out